loaf of bread on your head like I was baby. Niggas say they pull up and spray, what no saving. Shit, I'm out your trapping, no capping, trying to feed my baby. Yeah, I keep the 50, you dig your grave, I'ma lay you. I ain't with the back and forth beefing all on the internet. I'ma catch you lacking in traffic, nigga, and leave you there. Shit, I know some niggas, a cut you, spit you from ear to ear. Pesto to the gristle, my nigga, rest in peace, soldier slim. Slum 1200 GGI mob shit. And I'm back. I mean, first off, I want to start by saying, may the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be with everybody and their family that lost their lives at this time when this when this shit was going on. You know what I'm saying on the West Bank. So who remember when they had when they really started trying to bang the Crips and Bloods out here in the city? Like I ain't talking about after Wayne them started repping the blood. Thing or whatever after they started making it hot or whatever i'm talking about when they really started trying to do it this was on the west bank they was doing it hard around the time g slim and all them was doing their thing on the west bank Got more juice. I'm hitting the things, now my Chevy's getting loose. I'm just showing off, despite the fact I'm high. We finished the blood, now my homie done crack the eyes. Take me a swig and pass it to my neck. We hollering at the hood rat, we both trying to dig, but she shows no love. We kick her to the curb, swerve, and roll up another fat. On my way to the park, straight foot in the back, but we can't get in if we ain't got a fizz that fizz out. Now my homies getting switches, bring them out the trains. While I'm just kicking back, being cool just like every day. My car is full of potent smoke and I'm just having fun. That funky feeling got me feeling, won't you know another one? Now my homies hitting switches and they're both in trains. While I'm just kicking back, being cool just like every day. My car is full of potent smoke and I'm but I'm trying to see how many of y'all remember when they had the Crips and Bloods thing going. I'm talking about they was going full time on the West Bank. New Orleans gun problem isn't limited to the ghettos. Middle class kids in the suburbs of Jefferson Parish are also buying guns and joining gangs. Do you think there's peer pressure to have a gun if you're a teenager today? Oh, there's peer pressure that you got if the next man got a gun and you're always getting threatened by a gun. But you can't have, but you can't sit there and fight the man because you got a gun. So it makes you want to go get a gun. Did you get a gun because you were threatened or because you wanted to be cool? No, just kind of just like wanted to be like everybody else. What do you think the party that you go to tonight is going to be like? Are you going to carry your guns with you? Yeah, I've got to. <laughs> Just to go to a party on a Friday night? You gotta do it, man. Gotta do it. Can't leave them in the car because you won't have time to run to your coach. Not these days. Yeah! People in this society is responsible for what's going on right now. Because what I'm talking about guns, we had, you know, was for gang banging purposes. You didn't never get a gun to say, man, I got a gun. It was for safety, protection, and doing yours. You know? One of my partners lost his life around this time. I won't say this was around 1995 when um I think that old got killed in 96 though. It was 95, 96, something like that. Could have been 97, but I won't say it was 95, 96. But um, but I think that old did could get killed in the Harvey Tunnel around '95, if I ain't mistaken. He played for Van McMurray on um, no football team. He played running back, actually I think fullback, if I ain't mistaken. And shout out to T.O.T. You know what I'm saying? T.O.T. played for Harrell, and that old played for um for Van Mac, for Rubber. You know what I'm saying? But both of them went to Carter G. Wilson with us, you know what I'm saying? I think, I won't say, um, Thedo was banging on, I won't say he was doing the Crip thing, if I ain't mistaken, but he probably was doing the blood thing. But I, I, I remember them having a shooting, you know, a long time ago in the Harvey Tunnel, and he was one of the people that lost his life in the incident, you know what I'm saying? And it was, that was, it was crazy at the time, you know what I'm saying? Because they really was... It's like that really was something that they really was doing on the West Bank, like hard. You know what I'm saying? It's like before we even really, we was on the, the gang banging stuff, you know what I'm saying? From the Colors movie and stuff like that, but it wasn't to where I was seeing nobody really wearing no rags. You feel me? Like like we, we wore bandanas in the city. I ain't even gonna say that. I'm sorry about that. Because people always did wear bandanas, but it wasn't on no color thing. You know, it was more of on some section on, on, on what part you from, you feel me? Like, 
the whole third world war red rags no matter if you was from the calio the magnolia or the melphamine they will they will red rags you know what i'm saying until soldiers started the soldier rag thing you feel me then they started you know they converted to the soldier rag and the cali on the mel still had the red rag you know what i'm saying but i know the, the saint thomas had the black the black and white rag the 11 wall had the 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 11 wall had the white the white bandana with the black tracing on it and the, um the 12 wall had the navy blue bandana which was the crip bandana and um i can't really remember which other colors represented what wards but I know that that's how it was back then, you know what I'm saying? Like when I was coming up. Smaller cities like New Orleans, Louisiana are dealing with the same deadly plague. In New Orleans, where more than one in five students believe they will be shot before age 25, Alfie Portier High School students wear ID cards, uniforms, and undergo periodic gun searches. One day last year, one of the one of the quiet, supposedly quiet students, you know, we were walking down the back stairs and he was running down the steps and he accidentally dropped his gun. And I was like, man, what you doing with that? You know, you small, you quiet, you don't bother nobody. What you need with a gun? He's like, well, like, you know, I got to start this jacket and stuff. And because I'm small, you know, I got to protect myself. So he carries his gun. This student who was accidentally shot in school wonders if gun security measures are really effective. Kids, you know, they have the gates every day. They can just throw the um, bags across the fence, come on into the school. And after I got shot, they had um, metal detectors for a couple of weeks, and after it just faded out. But I don't think they really take it seriously. A, a couple people did lose their life, you know what I'm saying, in that situation when it was going on. And I guess it was just like a little phase, but, you know, they still had a little gang stuff going on over there after that, too. You know what I'm saying, with the D-block and all that other stuff over there, you know, so... I guess that's something that, the, you know, the West Bank, I guess in Harvey, in certain parts, they kind of like, you know, was more on some banging and, you know, stuff like that. But back in the 90s, you know what I'm saying, when I was coming up and people was wearing rags, it was they was banging too, but they was just section banging. You know what I'm saying? They more was where you was from. That's what the rag told people, you know what I'm saying? And on, on they behalf, the rags say what, you know, which gang they banging. But it's like all the same if you really look at it. It just really wasn't no 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 big i don't know because it's really crazy when you really think about it like because as i'm trying to explain it it's kind of like a it's kind of like the same thing to me like it's like they not they not like it's like a wall that they hanging in at the same time anyway but they really just banging these colors but if you really look at it in the nine it's like you know on, on the opposite side of the river on our side of the river you know what i'm saying on the east bank it's like they was using the colors to bang sections. You know what I'm saying? So when you really look at it, it's like they still dying behind the rag. You know what I'm saying? Because this rag represents the 12th wall, the 10th wall, the 11th wall, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it was just more on some walls instead of, you know what I'm saying, people saying crip or blood. You know what I'm saying? In an area where juvenile weapons violations increased nearly 50% in four years, Students at suburban Grace King High School, where some members of the KC mob attend, wear ID cards, use see-through backpacks, and undergo random searches by a metal detector called a wand. Being searched by that wand doesn't make you feel violated? Yeah, but they have to do it. You know, that's the way I think of it. I don't like it, but they have to do it. In a way, it's like we can't be trusted, almost like we're in a, you know, our own little prison while we're supposed to be free to learn. So, at the same time as our life's being violated, so is our education and stuff like that. Do you ever bring your gun to school? I did twice. Why? I kept it in my car. Why? Because, like, last year they had, like, a lot of fights. But not too much this year. Well, can't you have a fight without a gun? Not these days. In Omaha, where in September of 93, a second grader brought a loaded pistol to show his classmates, Public schools such as Benson High have no gun-specific security measures. If you want to find a gun, you, I mean, you're going to know. If, like when you go to Benson and stuff, you're going to know who's who, and this person has these in his trunk. You could possibly get a hold of them and work out a deal. I mean, this school system, you know, in the uh, Omaha area and stuff, really ain't dealing with it as far as, uh, you know, intervention. 
Because if a kid had a gun, you know, they kicking him out of school. I mean, yeah, maybe he should suffer some consequences, but you kicking him out of school, he's on his way for that other gun, and he ain't getting an education. While schools are trying to keep guns out of classrooms, police and community groups are trying to get guns off the street. Here in the property room of the Omaha Police Department, there are thousands of guns that have been confiscated or surrendered through gun buyback programs. With a new handgun produced every 20 seconds, teens are having no trouble getting their hands on the weapon of their choice. 38 sawed-off shotguns, 22s, 9mm, Mac-10s. You can get guns anywhere. It's easy. To get. Anywhere. You can get it on the black market. You can just have someone that can get a gun, get a gun, and report it stolen. You, there's a lot of ways. You can go in, you know, you go in a house and they got a gun in there. You go look in the closet. I'll tell you what gun the problem, right the problem in society today is it's easier to get a gun than it is to get an education. If you know the right kid, you can get a gun just like you go to the store and buy a pop. I mean, it's that simple. Guns range from 20 to 400 bucks, and they're easy to get. You can buy a handgun. I mean, like this gun right here, you could buy a handgun for buy 30, 40 bucks. bucks. This thing right here is a Mac 10. You know, I've got it from a homeboy. According to a 1992 report by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, there are currently 922 gun manufacturers in the U.S. Production of firearms jumped 42% between 1985 and 89, leaving over 200 million guns in circulation. While the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution has always protected the right to bear arms, today there are almost enough guns to arm every man, woman, and child. The teenager behind me is fighting for his life. He's got brain coming out of his head. Statistics show that gun violence is mainly an inner city problem, but to the emergency room staff here at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, death is not a black or white issue. They have to deal with the consequences of gun crazy kids almost every hour. It takes only a second to pull the trigger, but it's going to take a lot longer to solve this problem. 19-year-old Eddie Matos will probably spend the rest of his life in this New York hospital. Paralyzed from the neck down by a single bullet, Eddie breathes with the help of a respirator. A far cry from the life he led when at 16, he was a lieutenant in a Brooklyn drug ring. When you were renting yachts for parties and having lots of girls and making $5,000 a week, did you ever think this would happen to you? Man, I never thought it would happen. What's going too good and easy for me to think anything will ever happen. When Eddie heard about the fatal shooting at Jefferson, his old school, he decided something had to be done and wrote a letter to Mayor Dinkins prompting the formation of the power group. And then that's when they decided that they should have a bunch of gunshot wound patients go out and talk to high schools about Stopping violence. It doesn't take more than one bullet to destroy your whole life. You know, and once you pull a gun, if you pull that trigger, that's one thought that you can't retrieve. It affects us because, you know, we're like firsthand hearing what happens directly out of violence. But when you go back out in the real world and, you know, everybody don't have that same kind of knowledge that we have right here, right now. They looking at me now being in this situation. They don't want to be like this because it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. In its efforts to fight gun violence, the government has proposed, amongst other measures, a mandatory waiting period for handgun purchases and increasing ammunition taxes. But little can be done as long as the Second Amendment is interpreted as guaranteeing the right to bear arms. You know, they want to make a gun control law and just get it out of the picture. But where's the people control? Where's the counseling? Where's the programs for people? There is a program in New Orleans helping this 15-year-old boy who recently lost his big brother to gunfire. Thank you about him every day. Thank you about my brother every day. A peer counselor from Project Laugh helps Theron and his friends work through their grief and also provides them with guidance. You know, a part of you is gone. You, know, you can't see it anymore. But you still have to carry on with what you have set for yourself. All we can do is just remember the thing that, we, that he did with us. And just hope, you know, we don't have to deal with the same thing again. I mean, like, that Colors movie was serious because that Colors movie had us tripping. You know what I'm saying? And like they say, a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, we be controlled by the media. You know what I'm saying? So 
a lot of these, you know, stuff on the internet and you know what I'm saying, this stuff on the TV and things of that nature should be having a lot of these churn misconstrued, you know what I'm saying? And that's where a lot of us come in at, to give them the real stories, you know what I'm saying, and not fabricate nothing, you know what I'm saying, so that they see the glamour and see the, you know what I'm saying, the downside of the glamour as well, you feel me? Because a lot of these movies, you know, they, 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 they portray it a certain way, like, you know what I'm saying, they, they show the struggle, but they don't show you the whole struggle. You know what I'm saying? They show you the glamour, but they, they don't show you what come with the glamour. You feel what I'm saying? So, it's like, you know, only a few make it out. That's what these kids be needing to know. You know what I'm saying? And we be needing to preach to them that the road that they going down, a lot of them, it don't end to nothing but a lot of trauma, pain, heartache, and grief. The jail and the graveyard. The reason... I think kids are fighting more because of the movies and the games that we play and the news and stuff, how they show big cities where people are shooting each other. And so at the end of the day, where none of it really be worth it. You know what I'm saying? You do better just, you know, being an ordinary guy, you feel me, getting you a job or, you know, finding you something, you know, a little knack. Something that you love to do, whether it be Twitch or, you know what I'm saying, gaming or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But the streets, that's not it. You know what I'm saying? I, I preach that to my son and my daughter so much, you know, all my little cousins, my little nephews, like, that's just me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I even preach it to some of the little dudes I know I didn't knew coming up, you feel me? Like, younger than me around, just who I see, like, you know, come here, man, let me tell you something. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, bro, like, woo, 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 woo. Even though I'm stuck in it, that don't mean you got to be stuck, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't find different ways to do things legitimately, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't graduated from high school and this, that, and the third. So a lot of stuff you can't really use as a crutch or as an excuse, you know what I'm saying? It's going to determine if you want it or not. That's what it's all going to boil down to. You feel what I'm saying? If you're ready to apply yourself and you're ready to take the steps you need to take to try to achieve what you're trying to achieve in life, period. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people nowadays, they're just lazy, you know what I'm saying? So it just be... It be weird like that, but Chadwick, man, like that that little era was definitely crazy. You know what I'm saying? That '95 to '96 era, it seemed like we was going through a lot of identity crisis at the same time. But Bone Thugs and Harmony came out. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of things that was really influencing us for this the culture. You know, we still have a lot of things that's influencing us right now today for this the the culture. I ain't even gonna see the culture for this hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of that really don't be the culture, you know what I'm saying? The culture consists of the food, the jazz, you know what I'm saying? The the the, the beatboxing, the beating on the bucket, you know what I'm saying? Like, all that makes the culture, you know what I'm saying? All that goes in with the culture, but they be just trying to add the culture. They be trying to tag the culture to hip-hop so much where they be confusing people on what, what the culture really is and what culture really mean, you know what I'm saying? Culture doesn't just mean music. You feel what I'm saying? Like, a culture is like a culture. Like, you go to, like, when you look at the History Channel and they go to a civilization that no longer exists. You feel what I'm saying? It ain't no longer around. When they telling you about the people culture, they're not going to just be telling you about their music. I appreciate that, Judo. They're not going to just be telling you about their music. They're going to be telling you about the people as a whole. You feel what I'm saying? What what they what they did agriculturally, you know what I'm saying? If they was in the astronomy, and if, if they was in the agriculture, if they was in the astronomy, Astrology, any of that, you know what I'm saying? They gon' they gonna let you know that. You feel what I'm saying? So culture is it the culture is way more than just hip hop and just rap. You feel what I'm saying? That's just what they be brainwashing us with, you know. But um Streets never loved, brother brother. We just was we just was tricked into thinking the streets loved us. You heard me? The streets don't love nobody because the streets don't have no feelings. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why it's like we always used to just fall for the banana in the tailpipe every time. You feel what I'm saying? Because if, if you just listen to it, brother, I'm going to repeat it. You feel me? If you if somebody walk up to you and just be like, boy, you know the streets love you. Come on, bro. You know how stupid and ignorant that sound? How the streets going to love me, bro? The streets don't have no emotions, no feelings at all. So how the streets going to love me? And you can't tell me the people in the streets really love me. You know what I'm saying? Because... Majority of the people in the streets for themselves. You feel me? It's like dog eat dog. So, you know, we always fall for the banana in the tailpipe, bro. We fall for what sound better all the time. Every time. Real talk. 
it be that fast talking down here, you know what I'm saying? Like, that double talk, that double tongue. You know, you gotta watch that. Cause they got a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? They be talking and hissing at the same time. The whisperer that whispers in the ear, the whisperer. You hear me? If you gotta whisper it to me and tell you gotta whisper it to me, I'ma want hit. You can keep that, you hear me? I know that ain't nothing good, nothing positive. I'ma want hit, you hear me? Real talk. <clears throat> you already know. But you know, I've been trying to switch it up, you know, like I ain't been trying to I think I'm doing good too, because I had a problem. I had a habit of cussing, you know, you know, so I'm 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 doing better, you know. What's up, bro? I see you already know GGI mob shit. You already know that. Yeah, we just mobbing you did. We was talking about the Harvey Tunnel situation when they was doing the Crippin' Blood thing, you know. And like I said, we had a lot of influences for for the the hip hop culture, you know, like we had Bone Thugs and Harmony was popping at that time, you know, they was doing their thing, you know, looked like they was they used to, I think they used to be having bandanas and stuff on too, if I ain't mistaken, you know. We had Easy E and NWA, you know, they was a big influence on the culture, on hip hop, you know, they was banging, you know. So we had a lot of gang influence in the 90s, for sure, early 90s. We had a lot of gang influence. So I guess that's why a lot of people was really taken to the gang banging thing like that. Because it's like, at that time, a lot of people who was really prominent in the rap game and really was doing their thing in the rap game was banging. You know, like we had a lot of East Coast rappers that, you know, was doing their thing, but we had a lot of West Coast rappers that people listened to in the 90s. Like, you feel me? It was still that. Doom, 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 all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Computer love. Like, you know, like I said, the movies, you feel me? That menace to society, you know what I'm saying? Boys in the Hood, Juice, you know? Like, we had a lot of movies that was like, Heavily influencing the streets, you feel me? Heavily influencing people's minds, you know what I'm saying? People moving, trying to move just like on the TV, you know what I'm saying? Trying to do stuff they see off the TV, you know? Like all type of crap, you know what I'm saying? But that's just what it was, you know? But the 90s was the 90s was lit, you feel me? Like if I could, if I, if I could do, I think if I really had a, if I had, matter of fact, I'm going to ask y'all, I got 14 people in here right now. If you if, if any one of y'all had three wishes, what would it be? What would your first wish be? I could wait here. I think my first one would be just to go back. To, I would want. I would want to go back to the '90s. Like I would want to be the same age I am right now. But I would just. I wouldn't even want to go back. I would. I would want a chance to just see the '90s. Like you feel me? Like I would want to get to just watch the whole '90s. Like from '90 to 2000. You said it, bro. To have your mind, bro. I respect that. You feel me? Because. Like loved ones, I you know what I'm saying, but that would be I feel like that would be a selfish move, you know what I'm saying? So but I, I, I respect that, bro. Everybody need their mind, bro. And may the peace, mercy, and blessings be with your mind, man, with you, bro. I hope you find peace, brother. For sure. Live in peace. That was on my list for sure, you did, but I just wanted to see the 90s before I even get to that, you know what I'm saying? Replay the 90s for sure, you know what I'm saying? May the most high be with you, bro, on your journey. I would just want to replay the 90s just for the hell of it, you feel me? I just want to see the 90s. I just want to see it all over again and just get get to sit back and watch it because the 90s was a beautiful thing, like, for sure, you feel me? Late 80s, all through the 90s was beautiful. But um, my second wish would be to bring the world back, to be to bring the world back, to the day the devil tempted us in the garden. And matter of fact, scratch that. I would just want to see the world the first day the creator created it. 
before any temptation, before anything took place, I would just want to see the beauty of the world. On the first day, the creator created it. After everything was finished, everything was formed, I would just want to see that. You know what I'm saying? And my third wish will be to just take all the pain and suffering off the face of the earth. Like no no crime, no none of that, you know what I'm saying? Just peace and harmony. That would be my third wish. I would just wish for peace and harmony. Everybody to live equally, righteously. You know? But I would definitely want to see them nineties again for sure. From nineties was too late. For sure. But I, I definitely would want that peace and harmony for every every man, every woman on this earth. You know, I would want everybody to live equally, everybody to, to have the same amount of money. Like I would just want everything to flow, you know, like no heartache, no grief. You know what I'm saying? No misery, no none of that, man. Just like everybody and they don't need no money. Everybody just live free. You know what I'm saying? If you could, it's like if you could. If you and your family could take and cut some trees down and gather y'all on wood and build y'all a mansion or whatever. If y'all could gather the material to build y'all a mansion or a state or whatever, you would be free to do it. If I ruled the world. Shout out to Nas. Because I think I know what he meant when he made that song. Real talk. If I rule the world and everything in the sky the limit. You feel me? Real talk, I need to run for president though. No cap. No cap. Yeah, the world would be a better way. It, 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 the world would be a better way if everybody used what God gave them. Common sense. It would be way better. Much better. It would be much more peaceful. Because if, you, if if a lot of people use common sense, they wouldn't treat people the way they don't want to be treated. You know what I'm saying? You would treat everybody the way you want to be treated. Equally. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want no more. I don't want no less than I deserve. Facts. I ain't never trying to get over. You know what I'm saying? I always been like that. You feel me? You give me you could give me a thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying? And you only owe me whatever, whatever, whatever you gave me over, I'm going to give you back. Like, yeah, bro, you gave me too much. You feel me? Like, whatever. It's just like, that's what it is, you know? Because I be feeling like you don't get nowhere trying to get over on people. Like, like that's that's just bad karma, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't gonna never accomplish nothing in life. Like, living like that, just getting over. You know what I'm saying? Your whole, your whole MO and your whole, all your, your whole MO and your intentions just be on going with the move and getting over on people. Any way you can, you know what I'm saying? Just getting you out the subscribe deal. button if you already haven't. If you haven't already, you know what I'm saying? And stay plugged. I'll be right back. GGI Mob shit. I bleed the streets. I am the struggle. Yeah, I'm the struggle. I bleed the streets. I am the struggle. Yeah, I'm the street. I bleed the streets. I am the struggle. Play the cuts like peroxide. Wait in the bubble. Still trapping with this rapping. Yeah, I'm going, going in. in. Trying to murder everything, even the patent pen. No witnesses, no survivors. Red Cross, Glock fire, hot lava, head lost. 